as quickly the, uh, as tomorrow uh, night. So Field. let's send you now to Thank the podium for, for the announcement. Exciting day as the Chicago Cubs introduce new baseball leadership to the organization. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Cubs chairman Tom Ricketts for opening remarks and to introduce our new president of baseball operations. Tom. Uh, good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to the friendly confines. It was uh, almost two years ago today that I first addressed most of the people in this room as the new chairman of the Chicago Cubs. Back then, I said we had three priorities. We said that we wanted to be a good neighbor, and we have uh, gone about that and raised more money for charitable organizations than ever and reached out to our community more than ever. Another priority we had was to preserve Wrigley Field and we continue to work toward a solution that will help us get over the significant challenges we have here in our 100-year-old ballpark. But the first goal, the most important goal that we outlined on that day was to win a World Series. Today, we take a major step toward achieving that goal with the announcement of our new president of baseball operations, Theo Epstein. We began this search in August and I said at that point we were looking for someone with a background in player development, someone who had a proven track record of success, someone who had a strong analytical background, and someone who had experience in creating a culture of winning. It was also important to me that this person would not be someone who was content with their past successes, but with someone who would build on those successes to improve themselves and to improve the organization that they're with. Given these criteria that we laid out, I simply cannot imagine a better person for this job than Theo Epstein. Theo will assume the title of baseball operations, president of baseball operations, reporting directly to me. He will ultimately be responsible for all activities related to the baseball side of the Chicago Cubs organization. It will be my job to give him and all of his staff all the support that I can. I want to thank everyone in the base on the baseball staff. Over the past few months, the entire baseball organization has stayed together, stepped up, and worked very hard. And of course, I can't say enough about acting general manager Randy Bush, who has been a consummate professional and a valuable advisor throughout this process. I also want to thank our president of business operations, Crane Kenny. Crane is an excellent baseball executive who worked very hard to put this deal together, and his partition, participation in the process has been critical to its success. I would also like to thank my family, both as supportive siblings and diligent directors. This process has had a few interesting moments, but they were always steadfast in their support of me and their commitment to bringing the right leadership to our baseball organization. From a personal standpoint, while I, uh, while I enjoyed executing the search process, I'm glad it's over. <laughs> as the team chairman, I'm extremely pleased with the results of our, of our search. And as a fan, I'm truly excited about the future of this team. But now, it's time to go to work. But we, we look forward to going to work because we believe that the Chicago Cubs have the best fans in baseball. We know that we have the best ballpark in baseball. And we look forward to the day where we can say that we have the best team in baseball. And we are confident that our new president of baseball operations will lead us to that day. And with that, I'd like to introduce Theo Epstein. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. Thanks everybody for coming today. Yeah, I've waited a, a few weeks to say this, but it truly feels great to be a Cub today. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking Tom and, and the entire Ricketts family uh, for putting their faith in me uh, and for giving me this incredible opportunity. I wouldn't be here without your commitment to the fans and without your long-term vision for the organization. Uh, I'd also like to thank Crane Kenny for working tirelessly to get this transaction done. Uh, Crane, I've really enjoyed uh, my brief time working with you so far, and I look forward to working closely with you as my partner uh, on the business side of the organization. Uh, I'd like to thank Randy Bush 
and the entire baseball operations department uh, for being diligent stewards during this transition period. I've been around leadership changes in baseball and I've been around interim GM situations before. I know it's not easy. So great job, Randy. Great job, guys. Uh, I'd also like to thank Jim Henry, uh, whom I really admire, uh, for giving his all to this organization for 17 years, and especially uh, for staying on this summer under really unique circumstances to finish off uh, signing a very strong draft class. That really showed how much Jim put the Cubs' interest in front of his own interest, and I hope I can demonstrate that same class and loyalty to the Cubs during my tenure here. Uh, also, like to thank Cubs fans for being so incredibly welcoming to me and my family already. Uh, I appreciate your faith in me and promise to repay you uh, with the hard work and dedication that you deserve. I'd like to thank uh, John Henry, Tom Werner, and Larry Lucchino, not only for uh, allowing this move to happen, uh, but for giving me my original opportunity as a GM nine years ago uh, and for supporting me along the way, personally and professionally. Uh, also, a quick thank you to Terry Francona, uh, the players, all my coworkers and friends at the Red Sox, including the fans. Uh, thanks for all the great times there. I'm really proud of what we accomplished together, and I wish you nothing but the best going forward. And good luck today, Ben. Uh, finally, uh, I'd like to thank my beautiful wife, Marie, who's uh, been by my side for 10 years, and without whose support, this move wouldn't be possible. And uh, to Jack at home, uh, I love you, buddy. Um, you know, I was so fortunate to spend a decade in the Red Sox organization, and I consider myself very, very lucky to be a Cub today. It truly is an honor and a privilege to join such a special organization. To me, you know, baseball is better with tradition. Uh, baseball is better with history. Baseball is better with fans who care. Uh, baseball is better in ballparks like this. You know, baseball is better during the day. Uh, and baseball is best of all when you win. You know, that ultimately is why I'm here today. With this ownership and with this fan support, I firmly believe that we can preserve all of those things I just mentioned that make the, make, make the Cubs so special. And over time, build a consistent winner, a team that is playing baseball in October regularly and a team that will ultimately win the World Series. But that does not happen overnight, and it certainly does not happen because of any one person. Over time and together, we will build a solid foundation that delivers sustained success for the Cubs. That foundation for sustained success starts with a commitment to scouting and player development. Uh, not just the words, but the actions. Uh, the Ricketts family already demonstrated that commitment with an aggressive draft this past summer, and through our actions, we'll demonstrate that commitment every single day. Uh, our goal will be to build the best scouting department in the game, one that makes an annual impact in the draft uh, and internationally. Uh, as far as player development goes, we will define and implement a Cubs way of playing the game, and we won't rest until there's a steady stream of talent coming through the minor league system, trained in that Cubs way, making an impact out here at Wrigley Field. Uh, building a foundation for sustained success also requires a team of people uh, working passionately to support a common vision of what the Cubs can become. A big part of my job is to build a dynamic baseball operations department that is progressive, effective, and united. I plan to bring in some of the best and the brightest from outside the organization, but I also plan to sit down and learn from all the talented people who have served the Cubs so well over the years. Together, we'll work to define and implement a new vision for the Cubs. A foundation for sustained success also means creating sound decision-making processes. You know, there are hundreds of small decisions that baseball front offices make every day, little opportunities uh, to impact the organization. And our goal will be to create sound results through sound process. To that end, we'll use every bit of available information, traditional scouting on one hand uh, and objective data on, on the other hand, so that our evaluations can come into greater focus. We also pledge to dig deep with research and development to try to find that next great competitive advantage that will push the Cubs forward. Building a foundation for success also means creating a winning culture at the big league level. Our fans deserve a clubhouse full of players who are proud to wear the Cubs uniform and who are as passionate about winning as they are. 
Our players, on the other hand, deserve to know that their teammates have their backs. Uh, and they deserve to know that the organization will always be honest with them and will work hard to put them in a position to succeed. Uh, we're going to have to grind our way to the top, you know, and we must do so together. It will be a lot of work. Uh, good thing we are ready and we are hungry. Uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, when we do achieve that sustained success and ultimately win a World Series, it will not happen because of any one person. It will happen because of all of us. It will happen because one of our area scouts drives the extra six miles to get that one last look at a prospect before the draft. Uh, it'll happen because a rookie ball pitching coach comes out every day to early work until he finally finds that right grip for a young pitcher's changeup. It will happen because someone from our international staff takes the extra time uh, to really get to know a 17-year-old kid and helps make his transition to the States that much easier. It will happen because a fringe prospect in double A buys into the Cubs way, takes responsibility for his own development, and turns himself into a big piece of our big league puzzle. It will happen because our major league coaching staff is more prepared than their counterparts across the field. It will happen because our major league players band together, uh, support each other, overcome adversity, and work really hard to make our fans proud. You know, it will not be any one person. It will be all of us for the Chicago Cubs. I believe we will do it, and I really can't wait to help lead the way. So, Tom, thanks again for the opportunity. Can't wait to get started. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Theo. We can now open it up for questions and answers. We do have a pair of wireless microphones available. Please wait until you have a microphone in hand before asking your question. You spot the question askers. And please identify uh, yourself and your publication before asking the question. Okay. Um, Tom, Theo, Theo, welcome to Chicago. Thank you. I, Bruce Levine, ESPN Chicago. Uh, as far as addressing your, your managerial situation, how quickly do you want to talk to Mike, your coaches, and set up what you need to do in timely fashion? Yeah, yeah I've already had a couple nice uh, phone conversations with Mike Quaddy, uh, and uh, we, we have plans to meet in person sometime over the next week. So. You know, Mike seems like a great guy, and, he, and he's uh, developed uh, a great reputation over many decades in this game. So I look forward to sitting down with him in person as a first step, uh, sharing with him my vision for the organization. I'd like to hear his vision for the organization. We have to talk about some things that have happened over the last year or so. Uh, but I look forward to that process of exchanging information, sharing our visions, and then uh, we'll get together as a group and decide where we go from there. Theo, uh, Phil Rogers, Chicago Tribune. Uh, you, you referenced the Cubs 2011 draft, but I'm just wondering, um, as it was happening at the time, how you looked at the Cubs spending in that draft in Latin America in that period, because it's somewhat atypical of how, the, how previous operations have been. And do you think you would be here had they not been that aggressive last summer? Yeah, as the Cubs uh, draft went on, we were sitting in our draft room and we could tell what they were doing. And uh, we, I think we looked at each other in the draft room and we said, hey, they get it. You know, I think they finally get it. They're, they're going for it. And you know, I think that the dollars that we spend in the draft and the dollars that we spend internationally are some of the best dollars that we, that we spend in the industry, the best investments that we make. So it was a clear uh, philosophical change, in my opinion. And uh, what they've, in a new direction that they've taken over the last six months. So that, I think that got uh, my attention. It got everyone's attention in the game. It certainly uh, aligns well with my vision for how to run a baseball operation. So I, I'd say it was a significant moment. Theo Jim Rose from ABC7 here in Chicago. You grew up as a Red Sox fan, having been born in Brookline, Massachusetts. How tough was it for you? to make this change after having so much success at Boston? Sure. Um, you know, I had a great, a great 10 years with the Red Sox. Um, you know, we had uh, a lot of fun, a lot of success. We won two World Series. We got to see the, uh, the baseball operations department grow. We got to see the business side grow. We got to see the ballpark improve. We got to see how the city responded. Uh, I, I would never change it. I, I got to make friends that will last a lifetime. I got to share it all with my family. So I, I would never trade that experience for everything. But uh, I do believe, you know, Bill Walsh um, of the 49ers said it best, that af after about 10 years in sports, um, 
you know, there comes a time when you have to consider change for the benefit not only of the individual involved, but also uh, for the benefit of the organization. And uh, I wouldn't trade my time with the Red Sox, but I do think it was time to move on. They're in great hands, and they have a, a terrific future laid out in front of them. And I was ready for uh, the next big challenge, and this is certainly the ultimate challenge. I'm ready to embrace it and move forward. At the John Greenberg, ESPN Chicago. Uh, what do you see? You know, we've talked about rebuilding. People are talk aren't sure of this uh, lineup's kind of in, in flux a little bit. Mm -hmm. How comfortable are you with that? And where do you see the next couple of years going? What you have now? Sure. Uh, you know, I talked in my remarks about building a foundation for sustained success, and that really is the goal—not just to you know have one good season and then fall back. It's to do things the right way. Uh, build it up through scouting and player development, establish a foundation that allows you to have sustained success year in, year out. So that's going to be something that we focus on every single day, all of us in baseball operations building that foundation. But there's a parallel front. Um, at the same time, we're going to be working on, on the Major League Club because every season represents a new opportunity to win. Every opportunity to win is sacred. It's sacred to us in, inside the organization. It should be sacred to the fans as well. And they deserve our best efforts to do what we can to improve the club to put, and put the club in a position to, to succeed in any given season. So those are the two par parallel fronts we're going to be operating on. We're going to dedicate a lot of time to building that foundation and also a lot of time and energy and creative thought to see what we can do to make the Cubs as competitive as possible, as good a baseball team as possible, and win as many games as possible. I will say you know, the, the decisions that we make uh, will be with the uh, best interests of the Cubs over the long haul in mind because uh, we need to do this the right way. You know, there are no shortcuts in baseball, um, but we're going to be working on both fronts. Opportunities to win are sacred and building a foundation for long-term success is fundamental. Theo, I'm David Kaplan from WJ Radio Comcast Sportsnet. Hey. There's been a lot of talk about culture change here at Wrigley Field. When you hear that term, culture change, in the clubhouse, in the organization, what does that mean to you? Uh, it means a couple different things. I think uh, the, the easiest way to start to change the culture is, is, in, the, is in the front office. And that uh, essentially involves uh, a lot of hard work. Uh, it involves uh, setting high standards. It involves uh, coming together around a common vision for the organization and getting everyone to buy in that uh, it's the most important thing in the world to us. And uh, essentially just working so hard that it creates uh, a, a culture of, uh, of responsibility, a culture of achievement, a culture of high standards. And if, if you're not ready to buy into that, you're probably uh, not going to be along for the ride. Um, that same thing happens uh, in the big league clubhouse. We can set, set the tone in the front office, and ultimately the manager and major league coaching staff uh, will be resp and the veteran leadership on the club will be responsible for setting that same tone, establishing a, a winning culture uh, in the Major League Clubhouse. And that involves players uh, prioritizing winning. It involves players having each other's back. It involves players taking seriously the responsibilities that come with the job, uh, preparation, uh, fitness, uh, you know, being ready to play every single day, and, and understanding that winning is the single most important thing. So. Um, Cultural changes don't come easily, uh, and you can't fake them. But I think you, ha you have to do it through hard work, and we're ready to do that. Theo, uh, Rick Morrissey from the Chicago Sun-Times. Um, you've made it pretty clear here that this is a, this is a team effort. Um, but what makes you think that you can do what no one else has been able to do in 103 years? Right. Well, again, it won't be me doing it. It will be, it'll be all of us doing it. Um, you know, when I, when I got to Boston, um, and I promise not to, to refer to the Red Sox in every answer, but I think it's apropos here because there are a lot of similarities. Um, and when I got to Boston, they hadn't won in 86 years, and uh, we didn't run from that challenge. Um, we embraced it, and we decided that the way to attack it was to uh, build the best baseball operation that we could uh, to try to establish a winning culture, to work as hard as possible, and to bring in players who cared more about each other and more about winning than what about th than what you know the people around them thought or the the external expectations or the external mindset. So that's something that uh, is going to be important to us here as well. You know, I, I just talked about it. We're going to build the best baseball operation we can. We're going to change the culture 
Our players are going to change the culture along with us in, in the Major League Clubhouse, and we're going to make uh, we're going to make building a foundation for sustained success uh, a priority. That'll lead to playing October baseball more often than not down the road. And once you get in in October, you know, there's a legitimate chance to win the World Series. So I believe we can do it, and I look forward to helping. Theo Pedro Gomez from ESPN. Hey, Pedro. Um, when you took over the Sox, that was a roster, an organization that was ready. I mean, in your first year, LCS, mm -hmm. second year, World Series champs. How do you view where the Cubs are today as you take over on day one? Right. Well, I, I certainly think that there's a, there's a gap between where we are and, and where we want to be. And, uh, you know, that doesn't affect uh, the work that we do to build that foundation that's going to start through scouting and player development. But it, it does impact how we look at our other primary responsibility, which is uh, taking advantage of those sacred opportunities to win. We're going to have to we're going to have to have a high hit rate. We're going to have to uh, take a creative look at the big league team and work extremely hard to put them in a position to uh, to contend next year and in the years that follow. You know, but it, but it, it can be done. It can be done. There are lots of examples of of teams uh, uh, coming off difficult seasons, pushing all the right buttons, and all of a sudden being in contention. You know that 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 doesn't always happen, and and there's uh, there's more variability when you're in that type of situation. But we're going to do our best on that front, even as you know the important daily work of building a foundation for long-term success continues on a parallel front. Theo, hi, David Schuster from WSCR Radio, and welcome to Chicago, Thank first you. of all. Um, it took a long time for you to get in here, um, and now that you are in charge, supposedly one of the hang-ups was a compensation package. Now that you are in charge, are you to figure out the final touches for the compensation package for you coming in here? Uh, well, you know, the first thing I'll say about that is the, the Cubs, Cubs and Red Sox have a great working relationship. They've had one for years. They're going to have one uh, together going forward in the future. There are a lot of solid relationships on both ends. And, uh, you know, they were able to make a lot of progress. You know, uh, I'm being announced as the president of baseball operations here today. Uh, ben Sherrington is going to be announced as the general manager of the Red Sox. And both organizations are, are going to move forward and we're able to attack the offseason with all we have. Uh, you know, the issue of compensation, uh, I'm sure, will be addressed in coming weeks, either between the clubs, which will give their, their best efforts to try to get it done, or ultimately by a third party. But I think the bigger picture here is that, you know, we got it done. The organizations are still allied and have amicable relations, and we can move forward. Tom, Barry Rosner, Daily Herald. Tom, uh, you were adamant about not wanting to bring in a baseball guy or not needing a baseball guy to run the entire baseball operation. Did you change your mind on that, or was it a case of having to elevate Theo in order to get him? Well, I mean, I think that um, no matter how you look at it, ultimately there has to be one person who's responsible for the decisions of the baseball organization and accountable for the results in the baseball organization. Uh, as of last summer, it was Jim, and as of today, it's Theo. And um, you know, there, it all has to come up to one, you know, to one person who's responsible. And so, um, I think you know, ultimately, that's that's basically how it works. So, um, last summer, when when that question was asked, I said I wasn't going to hire someone over Jim to uh, to second guess or to to watch him, and I'm not going to do the same thing to Theo. It's, it'll be his decisions, and he'll be accountable for the results. Theo uh, and Tom. George Hoffman from News Radio WBBM. Tom, can you take us through the process? Was Theo originally on your short list? And if so, because the Red Sox <coughs> appeared as if they were going to go to the playoffs and he had one more year left on his contract, did you view him then as a long shot? Well, the, um, on the process, uh, the way I managed it was we started without any list. Um, the first thing we did was take a look at all 30 teams and see what kind of results each of those teams had, pr had, had produced over the past 10 years, both in terms of uh, wins, win percentage, win consistency, win efficiency. We studied all the wins, and we also studied all the systems in baseball and, uh, and which of those were most consistent in creating major league players, which ones had the most major league ready players in their system, and which systems on average were the best. And uh, when you do all that, you come up with a handful of teams that seem to rise above. That's where we, um, you know, we focused our, our energies. On the side, what I was doing is I talked to um, 
about 20 people in Major League Baseball whom I trust, people that, um, that would maybe understand our situation and be able to give me a, a candid and confidential assessment of what I should be looking for and, and in a perfect world who I should be looking for. And that ran through the end of, uh, end of the season. And we knew that we, couldn't, we were not going to reach out to anyone until after the season. Um, but by the end of that process, it was, um, it was apparent to me that, uh, that Theo was the best man for this job. We uh, waited till uh, the right moment to, to address that with, with the Red Sox and then, and then move forward. Theo Rich, KWGN TV in Chicago. It, uh, this club has been at the bottom of the league in errors the last couple of years. How do you achieve, much about playing the Cub way, how do you change that and how quickly can you change that mentality of fundamental baseball? Sure. Well, uh, defense is, is an integral part of the game. You know, run prevention as a whole, pitching and defense is essential if you're going to have a winning club. And it, it really does start with, with good fundamental play. And that's something that we have to prioritize, not just at the big league level, but, but throughout the organization. We have to create a Cubs. The Cubs way touches all aspects of the game. And, and there will be uh, a player development manual with, with the appropriate way to play defense at every position, expectations that we have for our players, not just offensively, but also defensively. And um, once we build this foundation, that, uh, that Cubs way will be integrated vertically so that we're playing the game the same way uh, in the Dominican Summer League as we are in rookie ball, as we are in double A, as we are at the big league level. So that's a real opportunity uh, to create a competitive advantage. You know, if we can be sound fundamentally on the defensive side of the ball and with base running uh, up and down the organization, that will help us get where we want to go. Hi, Ed Sherman from Crane Chicago Business. This is for both of you. I'm wondering, how would you characterize the discussions that you had, what was discussed, and, and Theo, how important was it for you to get commitments from uh, Tom on front office staff and also payroll? We had great discussions. You know, we sat down and, and basically talked baseball for, for five or six hours, and we, um, you know, I shared from... I shared my experience with the Red Sox, things I thought we had done well, things I thought that we can do better, things I've learned from my time there that I, I could possibly apply going forward with the new organization. Shared my vision for uh, how I thought the Cubs should be run uh, going forward over the next period of time. And uh, Tom shared his experience. Uh, he's lear learned a lot about the game in the last two years, and I really respect his approach uh, getting out in the field, going down to visit the minor league staff and the scouts and spending time with them so he could get a feel for not just the, the macroeconomic picture of the game at the ownership level, but also down in the trenches how, how winning organizations are built. So we just uh, we talked baseball for a long time and that uh, I thought we really made a connection and that uh, made this a more attractive option for me uh, as far as commitments that he made I think we were open and honest with one another um, you know it's it's clear that uh, it will have an opportunity to grow the baseball operations staff I think we have to do that to build as dynamic as dynamic an operation as we want and it's also clear that there are uh, more than enough resources here for us to win. It'll be up to me to decide how to allocate those resources, not just with the Major League payroll, but in the draft, internationally, with, with hi hiring talented scouts and field staff. So uh, there's a great opportunity here. Uh, Theo, Dave, David Dave, Schuster, Dave. Oh, I'm sorry, David Schuster again. You, you penned a really thoughtful article that ran in the Boston Globe. And one of the things that you wrote in there was there's almost like a limitation of how long Sometimes you can hang around in an organization in sports, and I don't know what the time frame was. Can you expound on that and why that is in sports? Yeah, you know, I mentioned it uh, in the article this morning. I, I cited Bill Walsh, who um, is, you know, widely respected. And he had this theory, and others have had the same theory, that uh, after about 10 years in sports, uh, it reaches a time where you kind of need a new vision for the organization and where a coach or an executive maybe needs a new, a new challenge, a new landscape to, to apply his own, his own principles. So, um, you know, I don't know if that's an across-the-board rule. It actually applies to other high-pressure jobs as well. If you look at university presidents, for example, usually their peak effectiveness is for the first decade on the job, and after that they either move on or lose effectiveness. So. Um, you know, we got we got a lot we can do and a lot we can accomplish in the next 10 years if uh, if that repeats itself. But I'm, I'm really happy to be a Cub and looking forward to being a Cub for a long time. You know, David Hoff from the Chicago Tribune. You know, how much of the Cubs opening though influenced or accelerated that thinking in your own head because the opportunity that existed here and Tom, maybe you could address it. 
How well aware were you that he might be ready to move on from Boston? Well, my focus was on the Red Sox. I mean, we had a lot to do. We had, uh, you know, one of the most talented teams in baseball on the field, and we were in the midst of, of a great season that unfortunately ended with disappointment. But as I mentioned in the uh, the op-ed piece this morning, if. Yeah,